understand this because it's very critical that you guys understand this for the next point, which is the virtual IP address. Okay, let's assume this scenario. Okay, I have two machines here. They each have their own physical IP address, 10.0.0.1. This has 10.0.0.2. This has MAC address AA. This has MAC address BBB. Okay, and those machines are special. They have a special software. Okay, and this software allows these two machines to communicate with each other. Okay, and this is called a heartbeat. They send heartbeat to each other. Hey, sup, sup, sup. They just talk to each other. Okay, and they agree on a master node, or you call it a leader node, right? Or a main low, uh, node. And they agree also who are the backup nodes, right? Once they do that, they also agree on a single virtual IP address that re doesn't really exist in the real world. It's just they agree between each other, okay? You put in the configuration that, hey, I want you to have a virtual IP address of 10.0.0.100, and I want you to have a 10.0.0.100. It's like, oh, Hussein, that's a bad idea. I, I configured IP addresses back in the 90s, and you get conflict IP address. Nope, you don't, and I'm going to tell you how. Because there is no single, there is no two machines with the same virtual IP address in this case. There's only one. Those guys communicate and they say, okay, you're the master node. I'm going to be the backup. You answer the requests for this IP address, this virtual IP address. Because it's just an ARP request, guys. It's all software. It's not magic. Right? Because now what will happen is this, this virtual IP suddenly appeared in existence all of a sudden. Okay? Now, if the client asks a question, who has the IP address 10.0.0.100? It's going to ask everybody in the network. And guess what? It's going to get this guy going to get uh, uh, the question. This guy's going to get the question. This guy is smart enough, says, okay, yeah, I do have the 10 .0 but I am not the master node for this uh, virtual IP address. There is someone else. I'm not going to tell you anything. So I'm just going to drop that question. This guy received that question. He says, yep, I am the main. I'm your main. And it's going to respond with machine AAA. And once I do that, I'm going to put the destination MAC address as I'm going to just put the destination virtual IP address or IP address as 10.0.0.100 and I'm going to send that over and then you just funnel the request to anything on the back end. That could be Node.js, that could be Nginx, that could be HA proxy, caddy, anything really, right? But that's the trick is just at the lower level of this low level protocol, ARP, we played that trick, okay? So let's, let's throw in some monkey wrenches here. Let's assume the master died. I don't know. We unplugged it. It became unresponsive, right? It just died. You unplugged it. Or just become overloaded and CP over, uh, overflow memory, anything, right? Just died. Remember, those guys always send heartbeat to each other. So, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? That other machine, machine BBB, you said, Ask his question, hey, what's up? And it didn't get any response. Hey, are you there? Are you there? Yep, it's dead. Call it. Call it. I'm the master now. So it's going to assume the role of the master node for the IP address 10.0.0.100. Guess what? And it's going to tell the entire network that, hey, by the way, it's now me, right? I'm the OG now, okay? It's going to say that, by the way, 100, 10, 0, 0, 100, it's moi. It's BBB now. It's not AAA, right? And everybody was going to update their ARP tables and all that jazz. And now if I make a request, automatically the request goes there. Here's the, here's the, here's the deal, guys. That takes fraction of a second, obviously, because you're going to tell people that, hey, uh, AAA is dead. It's now me, right? I'm the OG now. Don't trust that OG, okay? So and everybody's just going to talk to each other. And that might take split of a second. So you might, in a high availability, you might still see some, the clients might still 
older client, stale client that, that still think that uh, 100, the 10 0, 0, 100 has the MAC address of AAA will still send requests to that and they will be dead essentially. Until their ARP table gets updated with a new MAC address, they will essentially uh, forward the request to that other request. So that whole thing, right, is called, the whole protocol that we discussed is called virtual router redundancy protocol. Those guys are acting like a virtual router because that's how a router works, right, guys? It's a gateway. It's like thinking of a gateway, okay? So that VRRP is what we talked about. There is a group of machines. There are multiple machines. They all share the same VIP and they talk within each other and they gossip and agree on a master, kind of like Zookeeper in a sense, right? But it's a lower level than Zookeeper. And they agree. So say, hey, it's me, it's me, it's me, right? That's the master, that's the backup. And once you do that, that's it. That's called the virtual router redundancy protocol. So that's what the VRRP and that's what a VIP. So if, I, if someone asks you what a virtual IP address is, it's essentially, it's just a fictitious thing that machines advertise as an answer to ARP requests, right? That's why you guys, you have to understand ARP requests. ARP requests is very network specific, but software engineers, you guys really need to understand this stuff, right? Let's take an example, a real life high availability examples. Let's describe what we have here. There's a lot of garbage. There are a bunch of machines. There is a load balancer. There is our back end service and there is a database, okay? And you can just basically, you can do a primary, secondary database if you like. I just have the one. But here's what let's just talk about. This is a Postgres database. These guys are Docker containers, for example or it could be like different machines, or it could be in the same machine, who cares? They're the same machine, spinning different ports, different applications. We have done that in the in this channel so many times. So I'm gonna reference the video here if you're interested. So you spin up a Node.js, Node.js, they, I don't know, they serve employees, REST endpoint, right? If you're still doing REST, right? <laughs> and there is a load balancer, could be HA proxy, could be Nginx, could be Caddy, could be Hitch, anything, right? Could be Envoy, could be Linkerd. What happened here is this is HA proxy for example, right? Could be anything else. And that, let's let's say this is a layer seven load balancer, okay? It acts uh, because it, it, it knows that there, it, it wants to look at the content and makes decisions based on the header uh, headers and, 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 and uh, URLs and, and maybe route requests and maybe uh, load balances different algorithm based on that, okay? So it looks at that stuff. And you have another software installed called Kiba Life. That's one of the softwares that, can you say softwares? I don't think that's a word, okay? That's one of the software that allow you to do high availability and supports this uh, thing we talked about, the VRRP, which is the Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, okay? That's a software that supports the VRRP. And you give it a group, of machines and you give it the same VIP, which is the virtual IP address, and it just it just it just does its job. It will give you one master virtual IP address and you share this virtual IP with people to the public. You put it as a DNS A record and people will connect to DNS, will connect to the virtual IP, will hit that, keep alive, will decide who is the master based on an answer to an ARP call and will give you the MAC address, communicate with that. Once you do that, the load balancer will take over, take that request and then follow it. Let's, let's take an example. I'm making a get request. Employees, look at that, look what happened. I'm gonna do it again. So we hit this one. So we hit that, right? The keep alive, that decide this is the master. This is the secondary node. It's exactly the same software, copy and paste Different machine, so HA proxy, the same configuration. This guy communicate with these guys. This guy communicate with these guys, but this guy is active. What does that mean? Active. This is like a more like, more like an active passive. Uh, another another uh, configuration called active passive. Right. There's another configuration called, called active active, which we can talk about in another video. But active passive is this is active. This is a passive. All the requests comes to this guy first, and. 
Once it requests, you give back the JSON response and you make another request and JProxy decides to send this request to this node this time and you get the exact result. And your proxy can send it back to this node instead, and so on. You can throw in a, an HTTP accelerator in the middle, right? Maybe here, right? To cache employees request because you don't really want to hit the database every time, right? Like varnish, you can put varnish here, okay? And then cache this stuff and secure it and determine the TLS and then all the jazz, right? And then that's how it works basically, right? Let's throw in a monkey wrench. Let's kill server one. I don't know, HA proxy died on this machine, right? What will happen? Keep alive.